Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. This is the waiver wire episode since it is Tuesday for week number 11. So we're getting pretty far into the football season. Obviously, at this point in time, you kind of know where your team stands. So waivers are going to be a little bit more interesting. You can look at some handcuff running backs if you really need to do so. If you're a team that has a very good record at this point in time, you can look at potential stashes as well. But if your team needs some extra help, you're probably looking at guys you can plug and play right away. I try to mix and match a good amount of waivers for both sides. But with that being said, everyone that's pretty much on my list is 50% or less rostered on both ESPN and Yahoo. There may be some other players that are available in your league. If you have questions about them, just feel free to leave them below as well. But we're going to start off with the quarterback position. First off, we got Mac Jones, who is 19 out of 23 this past week. 198 passing yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Ended up with 25.92 points in week 10. Rostered in 14% of ESPN leagues, 29% of Yahoo leagues. Pretty good chance that he's out there. Goes against the Atlanta Falcons in week number 11. And this is a very favorable matchup for him overall. It also is the Thursday night football game. He has what I would consider at least four out of six of his next matchups being favorable too. So maybe a guy that's a little bit more than just a one-week streamer. So you could spend probably like 2% of your fat budget on him if you need a quarterback this week. And potentially one to stash for the future as well. Then we're going to get over to one of the big names returning, and it's Cam Noon. So he was 3 out of 4 this past week, 8 passing yards, 1 touchdown, no interceptions, 14 rushing yards, and 1 rushing touchdown. He had 13.72 points in Week 10, and that was on very, very limited snaps, obviously. He is rostered in 13% of ESPN leagues, 17% of Yahoo leagues. He gets a little bit of a revenge game against his former coach and Ron Rivera and the Washington football team in Week number 11, and it's assumed that he will be the starter this week. So definitely has a little bit of rushing floor, has some upside there. If you're in a single quarterback league, if you need a streamer, could do a lot worse. Definitely worth a stash at the very least. So Cam Newton's probably somebody 3 to 5% of your fab budget. Just really depends on what your quarterback situation is at this point in time. Then we move over to Jimmy Garoppolo, who's been playing rather well since he killed me in the fantasy fantasy football league, but that's a whole other story. But last night he was 15 out of 19, 182 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, one yard rushing. He had 19.38 points in week 10 rostered in 10% of ESPN links, 25% of Yahoo leagues. So there's a pretty good chance that he's out there going against the lowly Jacksonville Jaguars defense in week number 11. I know they kind of did shut down Josh Allen the one week, but other than that, they really haven't been too good overall. So definitely a matchup that intrigues me. And if you look at his schedule, like the next five games are a cakewalk for Jimmy Garoppolo. So as long as he's the starting quarterback for the 49ers, he's going to have some value. Then we move over to the running back position. So we got Ramondre Stevenson. He played 55% of the snaps without Damian Harris in the lineup this past week. 20 carries, 100 yards, two touchdowns, five targets, four receptions, and 14 yards. Ended up with 27.4 points in week 10. Is he probably going to repeat that performance? Is he going to do better than that performance? Probably not, but he's still a guy that's worth picking up at this point in time. He's rostered in 28% of ESPN leagues, 33% of Yahoo leagues, goes against the Falcons in week number 11 in that Thursday night football game. So there is a chance that if Damian Harris is still in concussion protocol, he might miss this game. And at the very least, Ramon Drew Stevenson would be a nice one-week plug-and-play option. But he obviously does have some upside for more. Who knows what things are going to look like when Damian Harris does return to the lineup, whether it's a split backfield or Damian Harris takes over again, or Mondre Stevenson just continues in this lead role. It'll be very, very interesting to see. But at this point in time, Ramondre Stevenson, 5 to 10% of my average. If you really need somebody out there this week at the running back position, I consider going just a little bit higher. Then we move over to my boy, Jeff Wilson Jr. So I don't have the amount of snaps that he played last night. The snap counts were not out for that game yet as of the time of this recording. He had 10 carries for 28 yards, 2.8 points in week 10. Not like a great point total or anything. He's a guy that you want to stash on the end of your bench at this point in time. But he was active. He was getting carries once again. So that's obviously good to see. At least in my mind, he looked pretty good for a guy that had a major meniscal tear going into the season so it's nice to see him back out there on the field obviously he is one of my favorite players to watch to root for so I am a big fan of his but 9% rostered in ESPN 20% in Yahoo so there's a pretty good chance that he's out there goes against a very good matchup against Jacksonville in week number 11 as well but as of right now still looks like it is majority Elijah Mitchell's backfield but as we move on in the season Jeff Wilson Jr. could retake his throne Then another running back worth mentioning this week is Deonta Foreman for the Tennessee Titans. He played 35% of snaps, not like a crazy amount there, but he had 11 carries for 30 yards. That was the most amount of carries of any running back on the Tennessee Titans this week. Not Jeremy McNichols, not Adrian Peterson. It was Deonta Foreman, which it does make some sense since he was familiar with the offense coming in too, but he looks a little bit more explosive than he did last year. I know he had that 
Achilles tear with the Texans, obviously my favorite team, but he's starting to look more like his old self. He's never going to be 100% what he was, but he's looking like the running back with the most juice in this Tennessee Titans backfield. So could only be a matter of weeks. This is definitely a great stash play and maybe some of you can plug and play. Maybe not this week, but the next week after that. But with that being said, he had two targets, two receptions for 48 yards as well. 9.8 points in week 10. Roster in 2% of ESPN links, 6% of Yahoo links. Goes against a very favorable matchup in his former team in the Houston Texans in week 11. So that could be a pretty juicy matchup there. I'm not sure I'd start him quite this week, but maybe the week after that, like I already mentioned. Probably a guy that you spend 3 to 5% of your fab budget on. Maybe just a smidge more if you really believe in him or you really need a running back for the near future. Then last but not least is another one of my favorites, oddly enough, and it's Wayne Gallman. I was pretty high on him with this offseason with the 49ers. Then he ended up getting cut. Then he went to the Falcons. I'm like, well, he should get in there over Mike Davis at some point in time because he was the more efficient running back last year, even though Mike Davis may have been better for fantasy last year. Let's just put it that way. So Mike Davis has been very poor so far this season. Cordero Patterson left the game with an injury last week. Wayne Gallman got in. He played 43% of snaps, 15 carries for 55 yards. Nothing like crazy there. Had like one good run, but nothing crazy in terms of efficiency or anything. But the Falcons offense as a whole was pretty terrible. He had two targets, one reception, 21 yards there, 8.6 points in week 10. He's rostered in both ESPN and Yahoo, 1% of leagues. He's out there everywhere. And this is a guy you could potentially plug and play this week. And I don't think a lot of people are like super high on him because everybody loves Mike Davis for whatever reason, even though he's done nothing this year. They go against the Patriots week 11, Thursday night football matchup once again. But... 3 to 5% of my fab budget, probably what I feel comfortable spending on Wayne Gallman. Maybe if you need a starter, a little bit more. If we get news that Cordero Patterson's not playing in this game, Wayne Gallman looking a lot, lot better. Then we move over to the wide receiver position. So I got Sterling Shepard first. He had a buy in week 10. Roster in 49% of ESPN leagues, 34% of Yahoo leagues. So that's quite a big difference between the two sites there. So, so that's one that you're really going to need to see in your league where he is, if he's out there, if he's not. But you know, a guy that's had pretty consistent production when he's been healthy so far this year. Coming off the bye week, should be as healthy as he's going to get for the rest of the year. Going against the Tampa Bay defense that's, yeah, you know, been hit or miss in terms of allowing points to wide receivers, quarterbacks, passing yards, all that. Sterling Shepard, especially if you're in a PPR league, definitely somebody worth picking up. Maybe 2 to 4% of your fab budget is what I say at this point in time. Then another wide receiver coming off the bye week is Darnell Mooney, and he's rostering 46% of both ESPN and Yahoo leagues, goes against Baltimore in week 11. We've seen him be Justin Fields' favorite target so far this season. Obviously, that he's that quicker receiver, the one with the big play upside. Justin Fields is getting a little bit more comfortable throwing the ball deep. Offensive line played just a little bit better after getting Lawyer Borum back at right tackle. The young rookie that I was a big fan of coming out of Missouri, but without getting too far off track, that's going to help out Darnell Mooney. And honestly... The Ravens, when they've struggled against wide receivers, it's been the guys that have been a little bit quicker and get big plays over the top, it seems like. So Darnell Mooney could fit the mold for that. Could be a guy that you plug and play as soon as this week. So he's probably a guy that's been, you know, like 3 to 5% of my fab budget on. And if nothing else, maybe he helps your team down the stretch. Then we're going to move over to Elijah Moore. You know, everybody's offseason darling, but... You know, he scored three touchdowns in the last two weeks, although this one was in garbage time. He played 56% of snaps this past week, six targets, three receptions, 44 yards. He was the clear third wide receiver in terms of snaps behind both Corey Davis and Jamison Crowder, though, so important to keep that in mind. 13.4 points in Week 10, pretty solid performance against a good Buffalo Bills defense, even though his production really came in garbage time, but but you know what they say, garbage time points still count the same in fantasy football. He's rostered in 37% of ESPN leagues, 51% of Yahoo leagues, so there's a reasonable chance that he's out there. Maybe he's not. Goes against Miami's defense in week 11. Not the best matchup in the world, so probably a guy that you want to pick up, stash on your bench, and see if he does anything as the season moves along, but probably a 2-4% to 4% of my fab budget type of guy because he's really not a guy that I'm going to play at least this week. Then we got Rashad Bateman, kind of another like stash guy for me because I don't like really feel comfortable starting Bateman on a weekly basis. He played 55% of snaps, eight targets, six receptions, 80 yards this past week, 14 points in week 10. A lot of that production did come towards the end of the game though. Once again, garbage time points still count the same in fantasy football. He is rostered in 32% of ESPN leagues, 50% of Yahoo leagues. So a reasonable chance that he's still out there. There's a lot of truthers for him, just like Elijah Moore. Goes against the Bears in Week 11. Should be a pretty favorable matchup for him. I'm not sure if it's going to be him or Hollywood seeing Jalen Johnson in coverage, but that's obviously the Bears' best corner at this point in time. I do believe it will actually be on the Rashad Bateman side. I will leave the note below. 
if I'm wrong, though. But they did use Johnson to shadow Devontae Adams, but I don't think they're going to shadow against uh, Hollywood Brown in this matchup. But we'll just have to see how it turns out. Bateman, probably not somebody I'm looking to play right away this week, though. But, you know, that 2 to 4% of your fab budget, stash him on the your bench, see what he does throughout the rest of the year type of guy. Then we move down to Traquan Smith for the New Orleans Saints. He quietly played 91% of snaps this past week, seven targets, four receptions, 44 yards, one touchdown, 14.4 points in week 10. Rostered in 2% of ESPN links, 3% of Yahoo leagues. He's pretty much available everywhere. Goes against the Eagles in week 11. Hit or miss at times against wide receivers. Traquan Smith, somebody I definitely want on the back end of my bench, especially down the stretch because it's not like Michael Thomas is coming back any day because he's done for the year. So so I definitely think there's going to be weeks that you're going to be able to start Traquan Smith. It might not be this week, but in a couple future weeks, maybe you can start him. Probably a guy that I spend 2 to 3% of my fat budget on at this point in time. And then quietly, quietly, DeAndre Carter has turned into a thing in Washington for whatever reason a big surprise to me as a former Houston Texan he was not very good with the Texans especially fumbling punt returns and just didn't look that good as a wide receiver overall but he played 67 percent of snaps this past week six targets three receptions 56 yards the one touchdown and four yards rushing 15 points in week 10 he's rostered in essentially one percent of ESPN in the Yahoo leagues goes against the Carolina Panthers in week 11 and for whatever reason Taylor Heineke and him have a pretty strong connection I'm not sure exactly what it is but it's been working out so far. Probably a guy you want to stash on the your bench that that you want to roll out unless you're in a super deep league at this point in time, but a guy that you can probably spend 0 to 1% of your fab budget on and potentially help your team down the stretch. Then we move over to the tight end position, and once again, we're talking about Dan Arnold because he's still not rostered like in more than 50% of leagues. But he played 68% of snaps this past week, 7 targets, 5 receptions, 67 yards, 13.7 points in week 10, rostered in exactly 27% of both ESPN and Yahoo leagues. So that means over 70% of leagues. He's still out there. And this is a guy that's getting you like 7 targets or more a week. He's getting you double digit points like every single week. What more do you want out of a tight end? Yes, he's not scoring touchdowns, but he's as consistent as it comes when you're looking at that tight end position goes against San Francisco 49ers in week 11 which I tend to you know write off as an unfavorable matchup but we did see Tyler Higby score against them last night but a guy like Dan Arnold more in that build of like a wide receiver than a tight end because he was a wide receiver in college that converted to tight end might be a matchup that's a little bit more favorable to him than it would be for a regular tight end then we got Tyler Conklin, who's coming off a big week, played 71% of snaps this past week, five targets this week, seven targets the two weeks prior to that. He had three receptions, 11 yards, two touchdowns, 16.1 points in week 10, rostered in 38% of ESPN leagues, 30% of Yahoo leagues, so a pretty decent chance that he's still out there. He goes against the Green Bay Packers in week 11. I know the Packers defense has been a lot better as of late, oddly enough, but they have struggled against the tight end positions when it comes to relevant tight ends so far this season. Then last but not least in terms of tight ends, we got Adam Troutman, the second-year tight end out of Dayton. He played 84% of snaps this past week, six targets, five receptions, 32 yards. Nothing like super flashy, but he's out there on the field. They're getting him more involved. He's getting more targets every game. Jawan Johnson's pretty much not in the, involved in the offense at all anymore. Inactive two weeks ago, only played like 15% of snaps this past week as well. 8.2 points in week 10. Rostered in 3% of ESPN links, 5% of Yahoo leagues. He goes against the Philadelphia Eagles in week number 11, which is a very good matchup for him. Maybe, hey, maybe him and Trevor Simeon got a little bit of chemistry. If he gets in that end zone, he's definitely going to be a tight end that you want to start this week as well. And then last but not least, we're going to move over to the defenses. So you'll see one here that's over 50%, but I think these are the three defenses worth mentioning so far for this week. San Francisco 49ers, they're rostered in 48% of both ESPN and Yahoo leagues. They go against the Jacksonville Jaguars this week, so it's going to be a very favorable matchup. We saw what they did last night against the Rams. So 49ers, definitely a defense that I'm interested in picking up, probably 2 to 3% of my fat budget. And then the Tennessee Titans defense, they go against the Houston Texans this week. Should be a pretty favorable matchup once again. They've been playing better on defense. As much as I love my Texans, if they start that offensive line they did two weeks ago where it was like all backup offensive linemen and a center that signed to the team about eight days before that, it's not going to be a very pretty game. So the Titans are definitely one I would consider. They're rostered in 45% of ESPN leagues, decent chance that they're out there, and then 62% of the Yahoo League. So it's a little less likely in Yahoo Leagues that they are available, but probably spend like 2% of my fab budget on the Tennessee Titans defense overall. And then last but not least, the Miami Dolphins, who have actually been playing very, very well on defense as of late. 
They go against the New York Jets, one of the worst offenses you can probably get in the NFL right now, whether it's Mike White throwing four interceptions like last week or if Zach Wilson does come back. I know I love me some Zach Wilson, but the pressure that the Miami Dolphins can put on quarterbacks right now is a little bit scary, and they're just going all out. They're just blitzing five, six guys like half the time. It's just kind of crazy what they're doing, but hey, it's working. So if it's working against the Jets team that's not that good overall, it's probably going to be a good play once again this week. But they are rostered in 16% of ESPN leagues, 27% of Yahoo leagues. Pretty good chance that they're out there as well. Probably 1% to 2% of my fab budget is what I'd be willing to spend on the Miami Dolphins at this point in time. But with that being said, that's all I have for the Week 11 Waiver Wire episode. If you guys have any other questions related to waivers, be sure to leave them down below in the comments, and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. But with that being said, if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Definitely would appreciate it. It helps to build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports, which is one that's truly for you, the viewers helping you with your fantasy football, helping you with your DFS, whether it's NFL or NBA. Talking a little bit of football news, talking a little bit about injuries as well. Typically, that's in the starts and sits video, whether it's for the Thursday night football game or the regular starts and sits video that does come out on Saturday as well. And then with that being said, if you are a newer current subscriber who's yet to do so, also hit that notification bell down below. It's going to let you know every single time I post up a new video. Like I've been saying, I post up five videos related to fantasy football or NFL DFS during the week. And then I also have daily NBA DFS videos as well, if that's something you're into. But with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed. And then last but not least, special little shout out to each and every one of you watching today's video. I truly do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Definitely means a lot to me, and I hope each and every one of you has a great rest of your day.